I didn't hate the movie, but the problem is, is that I started looking a little bit deeper, thinking about plot points a little bit too hard, and then suddenly I'm upset. <laughs> That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, you're watching Small Entertainment, and today we are talking about The Invitation. And when I say in the intro, I start thinking about things a little bit too hard. I don't think it's uncommon for you to think about a media, a piece of media, whether it's a movie or a show or anything really, after you've, can, you've watched it. Every time I talk about a show or a movie or the like, I get comments that are like, I don't think this was meant to be analyzed in this way. What? Excuse me? What does that even mean? Like things have themes. Things have things that you're supposed to look at and be like, huh, that's interesting. You're allowed to interpret media in your own way. You can have issues with it. You can love it. And I just always think that that's so funny. It's like, no, we're just supposed to look at this thing as face value. And that's all we're supposed to get from it. Clicked on my video talking about this thing. And so I'm assuming you either wanted to hear my opinions on it or you wanted me to confirm your opinions on it. And then when I don't, you're like annoyed. That's my guess. Today we're talking about The Invitation, okay? Which is the newest uh, vampire movie to hit theaters. And I believe it's doing a theatrical release only. And I was actually very excited for this movie when I first started seeing the trailer in theaters. I like a good vampire story. I look like a good, <gasps> things are not as they seem story. I love those. And then the ending of the trailer pissed me off because I'm like, okay, clearly she wins. The moment is in the trailer. I may have to pull it up. It's when she kicks him. I, I is, It's when she kicks him, right? I was right. I was right. The wedding, the stabbing, the kicking, all of it. It's all there. Why? That annoyed me, but I was still excited to see it. And then I was on TikTok and this is, keeps happening with these movies on TikTok. I think TikTok is a impeccable marketing tool. I just think it needs to be used well. And these production companies aren't, aren't sorting it out yet. I just don't think they are because like they'll have one trailer in theaters and on every other platform. And then they go to TikTok and they're like, okay, but how can we make this like a meme? How can we, how can we advertise this to Gen Z? And so for this one, what killed me was they took an edit of the trailer with he's a 10, but and then with like the, the the computer voice, and then it was like, he's a 10, but he drinks blood. He's a 10, but he might be a vampire. And it's like, okay, one, stop, enough, done. You have this creepy cool trailer. You have this like, oh my God, oh my God, what is this? You know, and then you have this like joke trailer. And then they started doing interviews with the uh, two leads doing the same thing, he's a 10, but, which is fine. You can have those quirky little uh, interviews with your leads, that's fine. But that trailer edit, that pissed me off. I ended up seeing this Sunday of opening weekend, which fun fact, ended up apparently being the worst uh, box office weekend of the summer. But the invitation was at the top. How much did the invitation make? Hold on. The number of the box office this weekend with 7 million. By any measure, this was a flat out, no good, very bad, horrible box office weekend. This is from IndieWire, which is why they're <laughs> writing it like that. This weekend's number one film, The Invitation Sony grows just 7 million on the same weekend in 2019. That would have placed uh, seventh. I'm filming this Tuesday after opening weekend, by the way. I went to go see it because I was like, I'm gonna do my part for the film industry. I'm gonna go to the movies. I didn't dislike the movie, however, I think there was a lot of good that was in this movie and a lot of good that was just not fleshed out well. And I don't know if that's a timing issue. I don't know if it's a budget issue. I don't know if it's a writing issue. I, I don't think it was an acting issue. Overall, I did not have an issue with the acting. And then any issues that I had with acting, I really could chalk up to writing or directing in general. Okay, let me tell you about the movie itself. So our main character is Evie or Evelyn. Evie is a struggling artist. She's working as a cater waiter. Prior to the movie starting, she lost her mom to cancer. And it was always just her, her mom and her dad. And her dad died when she was a teenager and now her mom is gone. And so now she just has no one. She thinks she has friends but friend family is like not a thing in this movie, even though at the end it kind of is. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like friendship could have been a message here. See, there's things, again, there's things where it's like, I think you you know what you want, but you don't know how to execute it well. Evie uh, is working an event for a uh, genealogy company, you know, like 23andMe type of thing. They end up snagging a swag bag and in the swag bag is one of the DNA tests. So she's like, you know what? It's always ever been us. I'm alone now. 
despite your friend. He has a great friend that's like with her for most of the movie, at least in uh, theory with talking and all of that. And at one point it like becomes a non-issue. And I'm like, st I don't know. I just felt like there was like a story there that could have been explored more. And I just felt like it was kind of abandoned. But she decides to do the DNA test because she thinks that maybe she'll find some extended family through it. Uh, she does the DNA test and sure enough, she finds a cousin, cousin Oliver, British and uh, is coming to New York for business because they're in real estate, takes her to lunch. As they're talking and meeting, we get the backstory of like how Evie is related to like the family scandal. Basically her great grandmother uh, was supposed to be married to someone. And then instead she fell in love with someone who was working for the family and uh, got pregnant and had the baby. And then the uh, guy who got her pregnant took the baby to America and uh, raised her grandfather in America. She's like, ooh, that's a little awkward, most likely. And uh, instead Oliver's like, no, 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 everyone is so excited. You're like a part of the family that like no one's ever gotten to meet type of thing. There's a wedding coming up, actually, you should come. And she's like, to England? Evie's saying yes to this trip overall. Tries to play into different elements of her character. Like I said, Evie is an artist and she's looking for family. And that's like the main bits that we're kind of given at this time. But we're also shown her working in the service industry, dealing with dicky rich people. Because of that, what ends up happening is we see she's also very hesitant and kind of has questions and she's very strong-willed, which Agreed, there's different facets of people's characters that uh, come out in different situations. However, I feel with what we were given, the whole wanting a family side of things kind of is at odds with her not trusting literally anyone until she meets Walt, who's the vampire and the head of house. She's like kind of smitten with him and then that's like a whole separate thing. But still, it seems like she says yes to that because she wants the family element of things. And we get kind of glimpses of that. Throw the fact that she's an artist in there. And I don't know, have you met an artist? They're so down to drop. Like, you want to pay for me to go to England? Hell yeah, look at that opportunity. That's great, let's go live life, let's go exploring, let's go do it. This is a crazy opportunity, let me go. That is every artist I've met for the most part, is they're like, great, let's go. I just feel like there's conflicting elements of her character that they don't really know what to do with everything. Already we're getting too into this, but I just feel like it kind of sets everything else up because her wanting a family is like the motivation, the catalyst for the entire movie. And then I felt like that was kind of like, nudge down a little bit. Anyway, she goes to England. Her and her friend are talking the entire time and she's like, listen, you know the rules, like send me text messages, tell me where you're going, all this stuff, tell me when you get there, like the friend stuff. Once they arrive to the DeVille's house, it's basically a castle and she's taken aback. You know, she's holding literally a handmade piece of pottery that she made for the married couple. I don't know, I just feel like they should have tried harder to make her believe that this was like a legitimate wedding that was happening because that's the, that's the, the twist. That's not a twist. There is a wedding that is happening. That's why she is told she is there. There is no wedding. The wedding is not happening. Uh, it's her wedding. There's no other couple. Anyways, Oliver is there. She meets Walt. Walt is hot in a way. Walt does not do it for me, but Walt's uh, charming. That does it for people. Kind of like disarming and he seems to clock exactly uh, what about Evie he needs to do to like get her to trust him and like him. This is Mr. DeVille. This is Walter DeVille. This is the guy who's running everything. DeVille. Devil, okay. <laughs> and then she is shown to her room by the head butler. The head butler is then introducing her to her lady's maid. And I should point out the uh, start of this whole movie that I just totally forgot about, the opening sequence. The opening sequence of the movie is uh, the butler looking into a room and being like, you have to eat, ma'am, everyone's worried about you. And she's like, no, I just can't do it anymore. So I know the costumes in this movie. Beautiful. I wish some things were fitted better on all the women. In particular, a lot of the items in the chest area were really ill-fitting, uh, but other than that, stunning outfits. Anyways, this woman breaks out of the room that she's being kept in, uh, saying that she just can't do it anymore. She goes to the piano and gets the, uh, the cables, the metal cables that are inside the piano, and then goes and gets a statue or a bust, ties the cable around her neck, ties it to the banister, uh, is holding the cable and she's like, this this ends with me, this is done. And she jumps off and just kind of hangs there. And I think they tried to make it seem like she hung herself, but uh, it, I mean, with what we see later, I think she has to take her head off. They would have to take their head off, I think. So I think it would have to take her head off. But if that was the case, then wouldn't her body drop down because the head's not holding the, the rest of her body in place to the string? 
These are things I think about when I'm watching a horror movie. Yes. First night Evie is in the house. She's on talking with her friend on the phone. She's wearing an Outlander t-shirt, which I did think was funny. While she's uh, FaceTiming her friend, Walt comes to apologize. And that's like a big moment for Evie. What happens next is one of the moments they lost me because Evie decides to go running at night in a foreign land. And I don't just mean a neighborhood she's not familiar with. She's in another country with people she does not know. In grounds she did not get a tour of, it looks like. And then she hears screaming in what's the ice house, the old fashioned ice house, which we don't know if that's what it is. And then she wakes up in bed. Why they gave us that, I don't know, because they're not really fucking with her mentally. That's not actually what's happening. There is another scene later where she keeps seeing things in her room at night. And what she's seeing in her room at night, we learn is Victoria, but that's not the point. So she oversleeps a little bit, changes, and then goes to her Alexander family reunion and meets the rest of their family. And it's very clearly white and dudes, it's all dudes. And they make a comment about how they have not had a girl in the family in generations. They're all very happy that she's there. And then she gets to make a toast and she was makes a toast about, you know, it's nice uh, that you've all welcomed me into the family. It's all very nice. She asks Oliver, she's like, so Walt's not like related to me, right? Cause she thinks he's hot. First day that Evie is there, they also arrive about six women that are servants for this whole wedding essentially. And they're numbered. I mean, literally their, their aprons and their collars have one through six. My guess is that's supposed to be a commentary about how they were not going to be seen as people. They were going to be seen as servants only and property. They make a point about Evie meeting some of the women and learning their names and commenting on their names at a later point because she is one of them essentially. And so therefore that's why she sees them as people when they're basically invisible to everyone else other than the butler who is like basically in charge of them. And they're basically also seen as livestock for the vampires. Walt gifts Evie a dress to wear to the bridal party, which is not a bridal party. This whole thing is so overdrawn. I don't get why they decided to do the wedding thing because the wedding thing is to convince Evie overall, which like, hey, there's a family reunion with all these major families. It's gonna be incredible. You really should come because you can meet everyone and you can meet like all of our associates. It'd be a great piece of contact for you, for art, because you know, rich people love art, you know? So I don't know, there was a way to do this that I think fit better than the wedding thing, but then obviously there ends up being a wedding. So, they couldn't do like, where's the bride and groom? They couldn't do that the entire time, but still if they changed it, but I just think there was a way to do this that like, I don't know, fit better. Should we finally meet the maids of honor, okay? Uh, and we meet Lucy and Victoria and they come in and Victoria is like kind of small and bubbly and blonde. And then Victoria is tall and has dark hair and uh, step on me anyways. But Lucy is very excited to meet Evie. It seems like Evie should have picked up on the fact that they were involving her in wedding party things earlier on. And she just doesn't. Oh, a gift from the maids of honors. They give her like a nesting doll thing. And at one point it's all laid out and it kind of shows like, oh yes, the one man, the three other little dolls that were inside of him, the three wives he needs. They did a terrible job, I think, showing that Victoria and Lucy were also Walt's wives. Anyway, Evie excuses herself from uh, Lucy and Victoria. Uh, Lucy leaves Victoria and goes to talk to Evie and is talking about New York. Evie just makes an impression on Lucy right away and is like, yeah, you should come to New York. I'll show you the tour. And Lucy's like, oh my God, I would love that. Lucy wants a sister wife. That's what Lucy wants. She wants a friend. She wants a sister. I've always wanted a sister that comes up later. So Walt comes to the party and immediately pulls Evie onto the dance floor. Everyone's staring at you. It's cause you're beautiful, all this stuff. And then Walt's like, come with me. Let's get out of here. Don't you have to host everyone? No, you're more fun. You know, they go for a walk. She starts talking about, don't you ever get bored with all the stuff uh, around here. They, It's the back and forth of like, oh, I've never had money. You have money. And the, you know, the discussion you have because of that, because you have money, but I don't want this. I'd rather have X, Y, and Z. And I have this and I want this. I want it. He shows her a pottery studio. Why is that not a red flag to you, girly pop? She doesn't see the fact that they have a working pottery and art studio with all the supplies that she would need for her art as a red flag. She's just like, why don't you use this? The dark romance girlies on TikTok have decided that this is their movie, that this movie should not have been advertised as a horror vampire movie and said should have been advertised as a dark romance movie. And I do believe it comes down to uh, this one particular line that was in this scene where Evie and Walt are talking. And Walt says something along the lines of, I'm not a very good person or I'm not a good guy. 
And Evie says, no, a bad guy wouldn't come and apologize to me. And almost kiss, don't kiss, there's fireworks. She's like, well, now it's cliche. And then they kiss. Anyway, she goes back to her room. That night, she is then once again dealing with something in her room. And there is a ghost there the entire time of Emmeline kind of popping in and out, but she's not there. And it's clearly trying to warn Evie. This is Ready or Not meets Crimson Peak and it's not done well, I don't think. She's screaming, she's scared. Walt runs in and is like, what's wrong, what's wrong? And uh, they clean up the mess because she knocked a bunch of stuff over. We see that one of the candles has a spike coming through it because obviously you place the big candle on the, uh, the candle holder, handle, labra, whatever the fuck. Obviously they show us that, so we have to remember that. You know, he agrees to stay with Evie while she falls asleep. And there's this kind of funny moment that I thought was funny because it's very clear this man is a vampire and is undead. He does not sleep. Why would he know what side of the bed he likes to sleep on? And I thought it was funny. That's the things that I like. The little, the little like, oh fuck, that's right. Humans have preferences that we don't even think about. I like that. That's fun. I like a vampire's quandary like that. He's like super awkward trying to get on the bed. Like, okay, yeah, this seems... Normal, leaves her a note, didn't want to wake you up, had to go do stuff. And then Lucy and Victoria come in and they're like, hey, we're it's the bridal parties going out today. Here's this, we, we have all the spa day or whatever. And they wear these beautiful robes that I was obsessed with. <laughs> and this is where we get the sequence from the trailer where Victoria is like swimming in the pool and Lucy and Evie are getting their nails done. Victoria makes the comment, I wonder if Walt told you about us. It comes across like, oh yeah, did he not tell you that we used to fuck? That's what it comes across like. But the thing is, is that the reveal is that no, Walt needs these three wives for power. Why? Don't ask too many questions, um, but that's what he needs from all the families to give all the families prosperity. And so he is married to Lucy and Victoria and he's trying to marry Evie. Victoria is like, oh no, she walks out naked and is like, oh no, you've cut yourself. Uh, let me see. And then just sucks the blood, like puts her finger in her mouth and sucks the blood. And Evie's like, what are you doing? Evie flees and goes to the library because uh, I think she mentions, don't you wonder what she get he gets up to in the library? Don't you wonder what he gets up to in the days? That's one of the things Victoria was saying. She goes through Walt's desk, breaks something, and in breaking something, she finds a dossier of Evie. Then goes to her room and starts packing to flee. Walt comes in and is like, oh, what's going on? Did something happen? Oh, why don't you look at your dossier or something? And like basically confronts him. Walt tells her, listen, I've had people come in to rip me off before. Oliver wanted to invite you. And he knows that I'm allergic to technology essentially. So he printed me out some things so that I could basically do my own little background check on you because you were coming into my home. And she doesn't, I don't know, he, maybe, She's dignitized because they end up sleeping together right after this. Literally the same scene, they sleep together. Girly pop, I expect more from you. <laughs> and then while they're in bed together after having sex one time, he jokes about her staying and like, just marry me, have a double wedding. Everything's all arranged. It's all here. Your family is here. And so she says yes, and then is immediately like, you know, I was joking, right? Apparently all he needs is her to say yes to getting married to him, and that's enough. Goes to dinner, she's wearing a red dress, she comes in late, everyone's wearing masks, she puts on her mask and is sat down next to Walt. Walt's clearly annoyed that he had to wait for her, but then is like, oh yeah, you're here, great. And then starts announcing everything. She's like, where are the bride and groom? As you all know, someone's been missing from this table. And then starts announcing the plot of the movie. Walt's a vampire, the vampire, essentially. Lucy's family and Victoria's families uh, who on the uh, legal affairs, the financial affairs, and the real estate affairs, the Alexanders. I've had a fruitful partnership for hundreds of years in exchange for prosperity and longer life, I don't know, but then time passes because they're all aging, so I don't know what it means. I think they get longer lifespans, but basically he keeps them all comfortable so long as they provide him with wives. Each family has to give him one wife, and that keeps him young, it keeps his wives young, and it keeps the families in prosperity. So the other families, it's my understanding, are not vampires. It's just Walt and then his wives. Those are vampires. Everyone else is just an asshole, um, including cousin Oliver. Evie has agreed to marry me, my new wife, and she starts hyperventilating. They then bring one of the servants out and Victoria's like, oh, thank God, I was getting so bored. Slices her throat, pours a glass from her blood for Walt. And then we get the sequence of everyone sitting at the table eating ravenously. And it's shot in the same way, the showing the food, everything, as they did with the, the cuticle scene, with the nail scene in the bridal party. 
and it's designed to be eerie and creepy, like the 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 sound effects, the ASMR, the the uncomfortable crunching of that. But the food, it's meant to see like, oh yes, isn't this disgusting? What's happening? They don't care about anything else. There's a dead woman now here. Evie's crying, you know, and they're just eating and stuffing their faces and uh, the gluttony of the rich. So then Evie tries to get up and tries to leave. No one stops her till she gets to the door. And then she's like, please, please let me go, please. I don't expect more from her in that moment. You're scared. You're just trying to get out. Her lady's maid is in the room as well. And she's clearly upset seeing Evie upset. Um, obviously all of the servants and everyone are also human. She's like, no, I, 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 I don't want to marry you. It's, and he's like, oh, you already said yes. That's all that matters. And it's like, okay, these powers that be or whatever the fuck is going on here um, to keep him powerful. He just needs a verbal yes. And then that's enough. Listen, my guy, consent can be revoked at any time. This was one of those scenes where I think could have been done so well because there's this super creepy line, the super creepy sequence that Walt does to Evie that I think could have been done so well if it was paced better, but it happened so quickly. No, I don't want this. And he like slams her up against the wall. It is growling in her ears, like, don't embarrass me. And then he kisses her cheek and says, it's me, it's okay. And it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, she's having her mind view of him, yoinked, it's gone, it's imploded, but he's still trying to play the part of the seductor in this moment. And it just would have been done so well if it was paced better, because it happens like, don't embarrass me, it's okay, it's me and moves on to the next thing and like leaves her. This happens so quickly. And I just felt like it could have been done so much better. Suddenly Evie is tied up to a chair and is carried down to the wine cellar. Walt tells Victoria, tonight is for you, tomorrow is for me. Lucy and Victoria basically are like, yeah, you know, here's the deal, here's the situation. Lucy's trying to keep her calm. It's like, look, we went through the same thing. Victoria's been with him for 500 years. I've been with him for a um, hundred. And uh, Emmeline and I were, were, were good friends, but she just, she lost her way. She got confused. I'm assuming that it's supposed to kind of be, and what we get up later is that Lucy is ready to die. Like losing Emmeline, all of the chaos, what they're doing to Evie, that's too much for her because Evie is a good person. And she obviously doesn't like this to Lucy. And so what ends up happening later, I felt like that could have been demonstrated more that she wasn't happy with how her life was, but she just seems excited to be getting a new sister the entire time. Like she likes Evie. She likes that Evie's, you know, from New York. She likes that Evie uh, is an artist, likes that Evie's nice. Like she likes that when she's been living with Victoria, Victoria kind of sees her as like a pet dog. I think she literally calls her a Yorkie for talking too much to Evie at one point. I think her name is Del, but one of the servants that uh, Evie was friendly with is chained up downstairs. Victoria goes to kill her and is like, no, don't. And then Victoria is like, hey, save, clean this one up for the ceremony. The master's new bride just taking a shine to her or something like that. Evie's like, I don't want to do this. Please let me go. Like, I don't want to do this. And and Victoria's like, here's your new home. Shows her a uh, coffin. Lucy's like, no, don't worry. We actually can go in the sun sometimes. Locks her into the uh, coffin. And it's just having a grand old time fucking with Evie. And Evie's in there trying to get out the entire night. And then now it's morning. The lady's maid gets her out and is like, do not stop running until you are on a plane out of England. You need to keep running. Get out of here. Again, power of being nice to people, which I mean, I agree with. I think you get so far in life just by being nice to people, in my opinion, I say as I rip into this movie. But in general, I think people in general treat service people like humans. It's really not that fucking hard, but she runs, okay? And she hides in the ice house because um, they're looking for her, they're searching the grounds. She sees some of the other servants that have been killed in the room and then her lady's maid is killed and her body is swapped on top of where Evie is hiding. Miller is the one that killed the lady's maid. He tells the other guys go find her and then stays in the ice house where he hears Evie make a noise. She confronts him, she kills him and then flees. Finally gets to a shop, banging on the door, please help me, tells them everything. It's Jonathan and Mina Harker. And she sees a photo with all the families and Jonathan and Mina. One of them gets her in the head and knocks her up, comes to 
against one of the servants in the library whilst they're talking with her and explaining everything. You said, yes, just think about how great this will be. At one point, Lucy, when she was trying to calm Evie down after the party before putting her into the coffin, she says, you know, what's gonna happen is you'll drink some of his blood and you'll have the strength of a hundred men. He'll drink your blood and then the transformation will be complete and then we'll be sisters. It'll be great. Goes back and forth, does this whole thing talking about, you know, the life that he's had and everything. Basically just drops his whole shtick trying to seduce Evie. Like, listen, this is going to happen. We're getting married. Evie is in her dress at the chapel. That's where we get the scene from the trailer. And it seems like in that moment, when she sees Del chained up there, Evie makes her choice of what she's going to do. And Lucy and Victoria are sitting in the pews with everyone else. Why they wouldn't be on either side of them? Because again, there's gonna be three wives now. This is a ceremony. It's you could have told me that they were related to Walt and I would believe that more than that they're married, you know? And whether it sees, he just sees them as ticking a box, like, oh, I just need wives. It doesn't matter. Whether he actually has feelings for Evie or he's trying to seduce her, whatever, it doesn't matter. I just feel like there was a way to demonstrate the three wives thing better and the need for the three wives. Side note, the whole ruse with getting Evie to England was partly because, again, Emmeline died recently it seems. And so that's why they're trying to get it done because then he needs three wives to keep up his youth, his power, and be able to bestow that to the rest of the family, including his other wives. So I think a way to kind of emphasize the speed of which this needed to happen is if something was weakening the vampires or the families or something was going wrong the entire time. Whether they start aging, they're clearly getting weaker throughout the time. Maybe they're not as peppy. Maybe her hair is getting dull. I don't know, something. Something to show that there is a time crunch for these vampires. We're just not really given a real demonstration of why there is a time crunch other than the fact that we're told there's a time crunch, which fine, I can suspend my disbelief. But then there's also no reason to extend the wedding a few days out further, unless you need all the families there and all of that to like convince her otherwise. I don't know, you had time to make Stockholm Syndrome set in. There wasn't seemingly a timeline other than the fact that you had a schedule printed up. Victoria's been alive for 500 years, or at least married to Walt for 500 years. Lucy's been around for 100 years, and then Walt's, you know, let's guess a few thousand years old. They did not think that Evie may have just suddenly changing her mind and suddenly being okay with marrying him that that's not a red flag to anyone. Even Victoria, if I were her, and already I don't like Evie, already I don't like that I am now once again one of three and not one of two. Her being just fine to sit back and let this all happen instead of standing up next to Walt to protect her husband because I feel like that would have been more of a, it doesn't even seem like she likes Walt. Like it's, it's not even like a jealous woman thing. I don't get, what, what does Victoria get out of this other than just being like a hot vampire? Is that what she gets? Is that all she wanted? Tried to flee basically twice now. So I don't know why they don't have her restrained to some degree because they know that once she drinks Walt's blood, she's gonna have the strength of a hundred men. That happened with Lucy, Emmeline, and Victoria. So would you not think, huh, let's make sure she doesn't flee before we finish the ritual. Which doesn't equal brains apparently, but whatever. He cuts his wrist to give her his blood she drains a bunch of his blood, it looks like, because he's weakened from how much blood she took. And we see the transformation, the veins coming up in her neck, her fangs, her uh, claws. He seems a little turned on by the fact that she's a half, a half vampire at this point. And she kind of stands up and feels the power. It never seems like she's afraid of being a vampire. She seems more distraught about the possibility of killing people to survive, not so much the potential hunger that'll come from it. Immediately says, I want that one next to Del, who was hung up and Del's freaked out, but she had kind of made eye contact. So, I mean, it was kind of like a, I have a plan type of look. Lady's maid said to kill them, you would stake the heart, fire, take the head off, I think, is what she told her. Now, if I'm a vampire and I know that though I have all of these loyal subjects, if they really wanted to take me out, all they have to do is set me on fire, maybe, I get, I get I wanna be sexy and romantic because I'm a vampire, but maybe I wouldn't have all of these literal lit candles in my wedding ceremony. I have a flair for the dramatic, but like, I feel like, you know, we can get some flickering fake candles off of Amazon because we're in the 21st century. I feel like it's so hard to die as a vampire these days. It's so easy to just keep existing. The health food industry is a cult in and of itself. All you have to do is tell people that garlic is bad for your gut. 
All you have to do is do that. And suddenly they'll do all the work for you. It's so easy. And instead we have to know we have to be dramatic and gothic romance. So suddenly flames. So she just comes up and knocks a bunch of the candles over and sets the whole room on fire. Takes one of the, I think it's one of the candle things and gets uh, Walt in the chest. He immediately starts aging and crumbling. Toria and Lucy run to his side and that is the only real time we get affection between them or worry in my opinion. That could have been done so much better. A good scene for Evie, cause she already doesn't trust anyone, is if there was a scene where like Walt is like, uh, maybe Lucy is like feeling a little uncomfortable, but also she likes Evie. So she's like going to Walt, like you're spending so much time with her. Maybe he like touches her face and is like, you're still my sweet girl or something. I don't know, something fucking weird. Something, something to show that there was some form of a marriage happening here. <laughs> Am I making myself clear? Anyways, so she walks out, she makes eye contact with Oliver and Oliver is like, oh shit, and runs, tells Dell to run for help. Victoria throws something at them and she's like, I killed him, it's done. And Victoria's like, that was just a flesh wound. If you killed him, I couldn't do this. And it seems like the age thing is not even a real thing because in traditional vampire lore, or at least in most of the vampire lore that I've consumed because I'm a psychopath, the older the vampire, the stronger the vampire. If you are, the older vampire is more likely going to beat a new vampire. Evie at this moment is not fully turned. She has not let Walt taste her blood. So therefore she is not a full vampire. She's a halfling as Victoria says. They start fighting, but it doesn't seem like they are at all unmatched strength wise, even though Victoria is at least 500 years old. Lucy jumps in and starts fighting Victoria and is like, we can stop this, it's done. Aren't you tired? You seemed excited to have a sister wife, but you didn't seem to really have a problem with the killing the entire time. You were upset that Evie was upset, but that's really it. There's all this art in the foyer and one of the arts is a battle sequence with a spear pointing out, which just seems like a safety hazard in general. Lucy sees this and impales both her and uh, Victoria on the uh, spear. And so they both die and turn to dust. Did Lucy want to die or was that really an accident? Because I don't, I really don't know what was happening there. Fire is spreading. The other family members are fleeing. Walt's there and he's like, how dare you, all this stuff. They start fighting. He's old and she gets him again and then kicks him into the fire, which is the scene at the end of the trailer. And then he burns and then her, as he's burning, her nails go back to normal, her teeth go back to normal. She is not officially a vampire, so him dying does not kill her. It just makes her go back to normal because she was a halfling. The house burns, again, she's gotten the shit kicked out of her. Victoria was trying to claw her heart at one point. I don't know, I like women covered in blood. Her hair should be fucked up. She, the, the house is literally on fire, burn her dress a little bit drenched in blood. She's in a white wedding dress with red accents, blood dripping down. That would have been so cool. W w did we run out of the blood budget? Two weeks later, don't know what happened with Della, but they, the house burned, the villas are gone, the family's scattered. We now see uh, Oliver talking about how, we don't know where she is, we took care of everything, talking on the phone, and then going into the Alexander Realty building. Then we cut to um, Evie wearing all black, and looking cool and her friend being like, let's go, let's go. I like this new look on you, by the way. Uh, let's go take out some vampires and all this stuff. I don't think the families are vampires. I don't think they are. Anyway, she's gonna go kill Oliver. They're committing murder. I don't know what about being coming a vampire and then not turning a vampire gets rid of you wanting to dress like an artist and wearing a bunch of fun colors and patterns and all of that, like Evie was wearing at the beginning of the movie. But her trying to kill Oliver, I mean, that sounds, I mean, same. Try to human traffic me into becoming a vampire. Fuck you, you know, that that fits. But the whole end of the movie kind of sets up like, I don't know, a little vigilante. I, I just felt the ending was awkward. It's not awful. It's just so much here could have been so much better. Like I said, I really like the costumes. The cinematography was done well. The setting was cool. There was things here that was good. It just was not done well. That's gonna be it. Um, did you watch The Invitation? Did you have any desire to watch The Invitation? Do you also hate the TikTokification of movie ads? Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, The Swell Shenanigans Podcast. Reminder, I have merch like that mug back there. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you'd also support my Patreon, that'll be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. There was something there with the don't embarrass me, kisses the cheek, it's okay, it's me. 
Like it would have been better if maybe he says, don't embarrass me. And then collects himself, realizes she's not calming down and that that's not working. So then he changes demeanors to the, it's me. You trust me to the guy that she's been falling for. Thank you, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crash, BC, China, Devion, David, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Hopeless, Incognito, Jacare, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lexus, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, S, me, more, Michael, Michael, J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, Williams, under his wink.